Joseph presenting him over here. Um, Very special also, that he continues God's work of spreading his kingdom. It's been a great joy for me to be here this evening. I did not know about this program, speak my retreat, but this is uh, And then uh, Father Roland told me, why don't you come and meet our people? And in my room over on top, I saw so many people. Great joy. Thank you for coming uh, over here on a hot May afternoon already from 4.30 I noticed people were coming and fanning themselves. <laughs> Today is one of the important, as Father Gilbert said, one of the important events of the church, the church's life. Uh, we've got Christmas when we celebrate the birth of Jesus coming. So important, so joyful, all families celebrated. All, all over the world, it's the most celebrated feast. We've got Good Friday, we think of the Passion and Death of our Lord, and the whole day in prayer. Great liturgical high point again of the year, and in our own prayer life, our own spiritual life. We've got, soon after that, the Resurrection. The Lord doesn't leave us in sadness. Resurrection, an ascension, mystery. Jesus appears so often to strengthen his apostles and disciples in their moments of sorrow, even though he had told them often that he had to be handed over and he would die, he would rise again. They never understood it. They were frightened, confused, and he appeared over and over again. As for seven weeks, we've heard in the Gospels, especially in the Sunday Gospels, the apparitions of our Lord, where he strengthened them, strengthened them continuously telling them that it is he who told Thomas, touch my side, touch my hands and feet. He made breakfast for them. He ate fish with them, just to show them that he had risen. He it was Jesus, real, the real Jesus. What they were imagining wasn't an hallucination, a ghost. It was Jesus himself over there present. And then we have today's feast. They were together, the apostles, disciples with Our Lady. And then Still, they had seen Jesus risen, but they were still not fully clear why he had to die, why all this had to happen. They were so few. How could they explain? How could they fight the mighty Roman Empire? How could they fight all the forces of religion which did not accept Jesus? And then today's feast, where the Holy Spirit came. And with this began the church. Today is the birthday of the church. Your birthday, my birthday. Because today is the birthday when Jesus, came, the Holy Spirit, came down and transformed the apostles' disciples. You know what happened after that? They weren't afraid to speak the gospel. They weren't afraid to go of the crowds. They weren't afraid of pain. They weren't afraid of death. All but one of them died a martyr's death. Joyfully, courageously, happily, victoriously giving witness to Jesus. And if you and I are disciples of Jesus today, it is because of what they began that first Pentecost day. It's such a joyful day for us to remember the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit transformed everything. Jesus, just before he ascended, came to the earth, appeared to them once again and told them, Peace I give you. My peace I leave you. What we hear in Mass every day, every Sunday, Receive the Holy Spirit. Your sins you forgive, they are forgiven. Your sins you retain, they are retained. And he told them that the coming of the Spirit gives peace. What is it that you and I want but peace? What is it that you and I want in our homes, in our communities, in our parishes, in our church, in our country, in the world, but peace? Peace, which is a feeling, an understanding, an experience of God's presence in us. God, our Heavenly Father, loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son to be with us. Jesus, who loved us so much, taught us everything that we know about religion, about the gospel, about life, about love, about pain, about sin, about darkness, about afterlife. And Jesus said, I go 
and I will not leave you alone. I will send you an advocate. I will send you the Spirit. And He, Jesus, is with us in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is with us. If only we open our lives, open our hearts to receive Him. He is with us to give us peace. He is with us to strengthen us. He is with us to assure us that everything will be good for those who follow our Lord Jesus. Many brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a strong experience of the Holy Spirit which I felt and which many of us felt. All of you have, most of you must have seen on television some parts of the conclave when we were entering. And uh, I was privileged also to be over there among the electors of the Holy Father. And we went in, I did not know it was being shown on television live, uh, we didn't know that. Uh, but we were inside a very prayerful atmosphere. We were given perfect arrangements like everything in the Vatican, given seats according to seniority. And we were, as we were at the votes, where each one had to vote separately. You saw, I was told, the oaths we took before the voting. But even after the doors were closed, each one had to vote. We were given a ballot. I choose, I mean, in Latin, El Ego Supreme Pontificem, I choose the Holy Father, and put a name. Each one had to go up with his ballot. Before, a very, it was like a chalice, a big bowl before the painting of the Last Judgment over there, Michelangelo's painting. Where each cardinal had to go separately with that ballot and take an oath again. I swear in the name of Jesus Christ, who is to judge me on the last day, the last judgment was there, that the one I am voting for is the one I consider in conscience to be the right person to lead the church. You said that publicly and loudly and then you put your ballot on a pat there's a pattern on the pattern. You turn the pattern and put it into the chalice. Each one. This took some time, I think 115 of us, so 20 minutes, or 25 minutes. And all of us were praying at the time, no one was chit-chatting. I had taken the book of Psalms, I saw Cardinal Ivan, another place he was saying the rosary. People all were praying, conscious of the seriousness. And we did not know, we had the first ballot, that's more. When we began the second day, uh, I can say for all of us gardens, that none of us were even thought that by the end of the day we would have a Holy Father because two-thirds means 77 votes out of 115. And uh, the media had highlighted some people. There was uh, first list, second list, etc. That did influence the cardinals. The cardinals voted, not the media. So we began the second day at breakfast, we very serious because even at dinner, we were locked up, we were locked up in a building. Means there was no television, no telephones, no newspapers, no radio, no communication, no meeting anybody outside, not connected with the conclave. And uh, even the conversation was very uh, serious. We were talking about each other's churches. I remember I had next to me for dinner that night the Archbishop the Cardinal of Colombo, opposite the Cardinal of Brazil. We were kind of We talked a little bit, uh, finished our dinner fast and breakfast also. And we didn't know what was going to happen. Lunch again came back. And yet, in the fifth ballot, uh, we had a pope, as you know. As we were coming back in the bus, the cardinals, many of us said, this is certainly the work of the state. There's no other way we could explain how people from all over the world we hardly we met each other, some of us for the first time that previous week, to get such a serious matter like choosing a Pope in five ballots could only be because the Holy Spirit was with us. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And we share that with each other. And now we know uh, how what an impression the Holy Father has made. Uh, it was the work of the Holy Spirit. Post factum also we see how he's given the church direction, how he's given the church a certain trust. Uh, God's man, God's choice. So it's not our choice, 
we were instruments of God. Jesus was in the boat, as I say, of the church, and he was awake, guiding us. That's why we were able to come to a decision so fast. That was really, I look back, uh, this was a forceful experience with the Holy Spirit. We can't explain any other human way. No, no canvassing, no balloting, no one tries to say vote for me, but absolutely nothing. It's a very, very, like a retreat. The atmosphere is not of a retreat. Uh, the first day uh, after the election, he had a mass with us. The, just the cardinal electors, the 114 of us who elected him. And then he, the next afternoon, he preached to us. And I want to share with you, you know, already, it's the same thoughts which he gave us. Uh, he did not have a paper when he was speaking, he spoke spontaneously, but that's, I can see, was something which he was wanted to share with us as a message for the world. He says now, so go ahead, you, my brother Carlos, we'll go to your diocese, different, I will be over here. And he said, I remember, he's very human. Uh, we were, I, mean, I was staying with him for a few days after the conclave, and many were going away, and he's telling me, all of you are going away and leaving me alone over here. <laughs> he's uh, very human. But he said they are going away, but you must remember our responsibility is threefold. We must walk with Jesus. He took from the readings, reflection, walk with Jesus. And that's the message I'm giving, sharing with you on this Pentecost day. To be in the church, to make this Holy Spirit effective, we must walk with Jesus. You and I can walk with Jesus only if the Holy Spirit is with us, forcefully. We cannot even say the name Jesus without the strength of the Holy Spirit. How can we walk without the Holy Spirit within us? Let's open ourselves to be able to walk with Jesus. Walking with Jesus means living according to the gospel. Walking with Jesus means feeling His presence in our hearts, in our homes. Walking with Jesus means allowing Him to talk to us continuously as our companion in life, as a companion as we go on in our different responsibilities. At home, in the office, school, whatever institution we are in, walk with Jesus. We will carry on our lives, but not alone, conscious that Jesus is with us. He's lying with you always. And that's the Holy Spirit assuring us that we can walk with Jesus. The second thing the Pope told us, Carlos, to walk with Jesus, but also build with Jesus. Build the church. All of us have different talents. This morning's second reading, uh, which you have heard, was the different talents that each one of us has, some in organizing, some in sewing maybe, some in cooking, some in giving leadership, some in teaching, different qualities, but all that together continuously building the church. Again for that, we can only do that with the Holy Spirit. Open ourselves to give our time our talents, ourselves, as God inspires us to, to build the church. To build the church as He wants it to, with strong bricks. The bricks being the human persons, helping to build your parish community, helping to build the Archdiocese of Bombay, helping to build the church in India, the church universal. Continuously build the church. We need the Holy Spirit. That's our task, your task and my task, to build the church with the Holy Spirit with us. And the third final point you told us, walk with Jesus, you build with Jesus, and witness Jesus. Show the face of Jesus to others. Again, that also can only come if you and I have the Holy Spirit with us, who shows us how to show Jesus to the world. How we build a face, build a church that really proclaims Jesus. A Jesus who teaches us love, teaches us service, teaches us forgiveness, teaches us justice, teaches us unity, teaches us peace, who gives peace to others as we receive peace ourselves. Give witness 
to Jesus. That is the mandate that you and I have in the church in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Father, as every time I met him, as soon as he was elected to which I can't agree to, and he said, please ask, pray for me, ask Church of India to pray for me several times. I mean, the very last day when I was leaving Rome and coming, I wished him goodbye, and he says, Carmen, ask the people to pray for me. Please pray for me, ask all the people to pray for me. I share that thought with you. He wasn't saying it as a formality, he really meant it. You know? And so I share this thought with you. Let's pray also for the Holy Father. Today, as we celebrate this great feast of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit has come on the church for the first time and continues to be with the church always, strengthening us, centering us on Jesus, guiding us continuously, let's pray. Pray for ourselves, each one of us. We need healing. We need openness to the Spirit. We need to be able to walk with Jesus always. Pray for us, ourselves. We pray for our families, spouse, children, parents, grandparents, in-laws, those who are with us. Pray that they are also open to the Spirit, the Spirit strengthens them. Pray for your communities. Pray for the parish. The parish, which is the unit of the diocese, Parish was meant to be really the family which gives witness to Jesus. Pray that the Holy Spirit might strengthen your parish. All our priests in the Archdiocese of Bombay, we pray for each one of them. Pray for those who are associated with you. Father Roland, Father Gilbert, who gives the message teaching, Bishop Elect Savio, Bishop Elect John, who will join us later, and myself. Pray for all the sisters working in your parish. The Holy Spirit might strengthen them also. Pray for the church, Archdiocese of Bombay, in India, our civic leaders. Pray for the church universal and pray for the Pope. He needs our prayers. He's asked for our prayers. We pray that the Lord strengthens him, gives him help, grace, wisdom, courage to be the voice of Jesus in the world. Happy feast and God bless each one of you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kanu, for those words of encouragement and yes, the CCR in Mumbai has a very strong intercessory network and we are praying for the church and very soon we will offer you a special bouquet and uh, friends, the first time I just met him, I shook hands and I touched him in a while because he touched the Pope. <laughs> so you, when he goes down, you don't touch him, you can touch me. <laughs> and I request the Cardinal and our Bishop Alec, Father Dominic Savia and Father Roland to come up to cut the birthday cake. Could you all stand please? The cake matches the backdrop. The cake matches, matches the rest, you know, dress. The table, everything is red. Everything is with power.
clap for the glory of the Lord. For this day the Lord has paid us. For the Lord has blessed us. We do not have cake for every one of you. But we have the Holy Spirit in our heart to wish in our, each other next to you. Please hug and wish each other next to you. We sing this for the last time. Come on. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the